Mr. Kip Sorensen, what's up, man? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. I, I, I know I say this all the time, but like, like I really look forward. I don't think guys realize what this call does for us. Oh, it's it, so good for us. Agreed. Like, like I, as silly as it would be, even if there wasn't a podcast and no YouTube channel and you're like, hey, Kip, let's do an AMA every Tuesday and we'll talk through stuff. I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I would I, totally I do people, it if no one was listening. <laughs> I know, man. I tell people like I personally am the biggest recipient of – order of man movement. And maybe that's cause I'm the, the least qualified person to talk about this stuff. <laughs> but quite honestly, man, like the, the, the conversations that you and I have, the type of conversations I have with other individuals, I was just telling you this afternoon, I get to record with Donald Cowboy Cerrone, which is a so man cool. that, man, I have respected that guy for years and years and years. So yeah, you know, we talk about it and say we like serving and helping other people, but it's like selfish too, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, uh, in fact, regarding Cerrone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna text you later. I'll text you the fight, who, who he was fighting, but possibly the best combo in MMA history. Yeah, was I know exactly what it is. I know what it is. It's like a one, two. And then I think like a, like a low leg kick or something to the head. Yeah. Something and then like that. followed up with a straight, right. It, it the was the best combo ever. <laughs> it was like a movie. It and I was, was like, man, holy crap. That was beautiful. And, and so I'm curious, like, was he working on that combo the whole, t like was that, that, that just happen? Or I'll ask him about was it. that part of his camp? You know what I mean? I, I'm really yeah. curious. But you know anyway. who else I'm impressed with is Ortega. Did you see Ortega fight the Korean zombie this, this past weekend? Yeah, holy man. He cow. Good. I mean, he's a jiu-jitsu player, but holy cow. Like, he has leveled up his game and become, you know, multi multi-dimensional. Lots of different facets yeah. to him as well, which is actually really – that's why I like UFC is I like the fighting aspect. I like the physicality. But I, I love the mastery. I love pitting one guy against another in this cage where nobody can hide, nobody can run. All of your training is on full display, whether you did it or whether you didn't. There's nowhere to hide. And it's very, very, as, as, a, as a former high school wrestler and now getting involved in jujitsu, it's very scary. But I just believe there's so much to be learned on the mats about being a man. And so to see Ortega and the way that he fought that match which was different than what you would traditionally expect. It's Man. an absolutely incredible fight. Yeah. And then the and respect. Did you see the respect afterwards? Like huge. bowing to each other, Korean zombies slapped him in the face, right? Like <laughs> just the level of respect was, it was just cool. Like it was really cool yeah. to see. And what's interesting is how many of us can be violent like that and still respect your opponent most people yeah, can't man. their egos are in the way screw that guy I hate overly that like, emotional yeah overly emotional i mean I, I don't know and the grit like if you think of cerrone is like how many times has he taken a fight with like zero notice no time and whatsoever. he's like yeah put me in the cage i'm ready like the <laughs> no prep but that's some like that represents what kind of guy he is right he's like a guy of action he's like oh you know what i'm down you know, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm ready. I'm prepared, you know? So I don't know. It's, it's pretty amazing. It's amazing. Congrats. So getting well, that uh, interview. Nah, that's I mean, super cool. Let's make sure we have the conversation first, right? Cause that's <laughs> yeah. one of those things, you know, when people put on their, cause look, I've had things fall through, you know, especially people who, who have some notoriety, you know, they get busy and they get other offers and things. So I've had th things fall through, but it, it yeah. reminds me of, you know, somebody posts on their, their social media profile of like, I'm going to run a marathon in three months. And everybody's like, congratulations. You're so amazing. Yeah. Like, whoa, Good whoa, whoa. job. Yeah. You just typed in some, some words <laughs> on the computer. Like you actually didn't do any, you haven't even started training yet. So let's not celebrate before, before we're actually there. So yeah, yeah. I it's hope like, it works out, man. It's like great job on 75 hard when you're on day five. You're like, well, right. you know, five I'm, days. I'm going to do it. Oh, good decision. <laughs> well, okay. You know, I mean, there's something to be said for making good decisions. There's infinitely more to be said about, following through on them so <laughs> well i'm sure it will go well or at least my hope is that it will go well but uh well i'm sure i'm not the only one looking forward to that interview that'll be great it's um you know it's a lot like movies i know about myself when you would actually go to a movie theater i don't think people do that anymore over the last year anyways. <laughs>
you, you'd be really hyped up on this movie and you'd watch it and it was horrible just absolutely yeah, horrible and down, the movie yeah. probably wasn't that bad you just hyped it up in your mind uh but if you just go in with zero expectations and this is what i've tried to do just in life in general just go in with zero expectations downplay the expectations minimize them then you're always pleasantly surprised and that's like seemed to work pretty well for me so we'll, and that's what we'll we all should have done for all the star wars movies ever since you know 1981 holy cow you're no, <laughs> no joke disney has absolutely it could have been murdered, so amazing <laughs> murder that uh that franchise but yeah we'll save right. that one for another day <laughs> we'll talk about star wars for all you nerds that's right. You, you right. nerds, I think you fall into that same camp because I actually totally. don't know much of it. If you did a Star Wars totally. trivia with me, I would fail miserably. miserably. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably nerd out. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> All right, is that a Star Wars shirt it? you have on? Actually, it looks like a Star Wars shirt. No, oh, Iron, Iron Council. Council. Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the questions, man. All right. So our first questions, we're going to field from the Iron Council. As you guys know, that's our exclusive brotherhood. To learn, us, to learn more or to join us in the Iron Council, go to orderofman.com slash Iron Council. These first are question, exclusive to the Iron Council today, correct? Correct. I don't, I don't think we have some backups from our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash order of man, but uh, we have quite a bit from the IC. So we may cool. not uh, get to Facebook today. Let's do it. All right. Daniel Fox. Hey, Ryan, curious on your thoughts on how to balance Brazilian jiu-jitsu and lifting program as far as getting enough recovery. You know, I actually don't, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Kip, I actually don't need a lot of, a whole lot of jiu-jitsu recovery time. I got, I don't, I, I used to for sure, but now, yeah. I, you know, I'm four days a week. I, I don't, I mean, I get a little sore. My, my buddy Brody got me in a Kimura the other day and I tapped a little later than I should have. Yeah. And actually I think it was an America and it was Americana. I tapped a little later than I should have. And I heard a pop in my elbow and I was like, Oh no. Cause I wasn't worried about my elbow. I was worried about not being able to train. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh no. So I tapped and you could tell he was like, dude, are you okay? I heard a pop. I mean, it was, it was audible. And I was like, and it didn't hurt at all. It didn't hurt. Yeah. And I was like, oh no. Just tight and then. Super tight. And then that afternoon it like seized up and it was really painful. It took some joint warfare, took some Tylenol. The next day it was like 95%. So I'm fine. Yeah. But outside of like things like that, you know, maybe a little elbow soreness, knee soreness, joints, fingers, th things like that. I actually don't need a whole lot of recovery from jujitsu. Do you? I, I haven't noticed that I've needed a whole lot. No. But I think it's it's about your schedule, right? Like, guarantee. I used to play basketball every week. If I go play basketball to right now, I'm going to be a dead man tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. But when I'm playing every week, or when you're doing jujitsu four days a week, after so many weeks, you your recovery window reduces. But right. if you like haven't trained for six months and all of a sudden you go into the gym, are you going to be sore? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So I I think it's about creating that schedule and consistency, and then your recovery isn't as critical. That's what I, that's my thoughts. I also think there's a difference too. And you've talked about this between weight training and jujitsu in that when you're weight training, or at least when I am, I'm trying to muscle everything, right? Obviously, of course there's, there's yeah. technique and there's form, but you're trying to use your muscles to move weight that you're incapable of moving, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's the whole point to totally. make yourself more capable of lifting heavier weight. But with jujitsu, that's not what you're trying to do. You're actually trying to make things easier. So what's interesting, I don't know if you remember this, a couple of years ago at immersion camp, Jocko was talking and he said he's actually a lazy jujitsu player. Well, yeah. if you know Jocko, he's anything but lazy. Like that's not one word you would ever think to describe him. And yet that's the word he intentionally decided to use when it came to jujitsu, which is very telling. So you're not trying to muscle everything. You're actually trying to make it easier. How, how can I submit this person easier? How can I move myself from under this individual easier without having to use as much muscle? That's why you talk about uh, the, the slight, you know, when people say, oh man, you're really strong. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the uh, insult. <laughs> in any other context, you'd be like, thank you. But in jujitsu, you don't, I mean, it's good to be strong for sure. Yeah. But the whole idea is, hey, you're really, 
you're really technical or you're really good. Yeah. That would be a better compliment than you're really yeah. strong. Right. Yeah. You're really strong means, you know, your strength gave me a problem, not your technique. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was laughing today. I don't, I don't know what it is. And if Brody's listening, I'm going to call him out a little bit. I don't know what it is. I think he was just tired or whatever. I just, I pressure tapped him today and just from side control, side control. Yeah. Just to <laughs> put a ton of pressure in the right place. And I think he was, I think he was tired or something. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, dude, I shouldn't have tapped to that. I'm like, well, no, you shouldn't have tapped to that. And also I shouldn't just lay on you. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's uh, funny. back to the question though. Yeah. I train four days a week. Uh, I live how, how often are you lifting? Yeah. Three to four days a week. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it is a strength training program, but my trainer, Josiah Novak really know, knows that my priority is jujitsu. So he's built a program around being more resilient with jujitsu as opposed to just getting, you know, jacked for like power lifting. That's not what I'm doing right now or ever. I probably yeah, won't ever copy. do that because it just doesn't yeah. fit into what I'm trying to accomplish. So would you say some of that comes time, into play? Would some of that come into play? You think like the fact that you're lifting differently, like, do you think if you're doing traditional bodybuilding lifts that maybe the recovery would be more difficult or no? Yeah, no, I do because I tend to be somebody who's like pretty tight anyways. Yeah. I, and I don't do a whole lot of stretching. I don't feel like I'm very mobile or at least as mobile as I could be. So yeah, if I was doing a bunch of like super heavy weights and I just don't feel like it would help my game. I'd, I'd rather be more nimble, better, you know, flexibility, mobility. I think all of that stuff is more important than getting huge. Like, but totally. again, I'm not saying one's better than the other. It just depends on what you're after. Yeah. And I was never a CrossFitter, so I don't know how much of this like goes into CrossFit. Oh, but, CrossFit's um, great for it from my perspective. Yeah, because it's about reps, right? It's not uh, always about burnout. It's about how many, how, it's about longevity, strength, and repetition, not just about like what was your PR and, you know, that's it. And then you move on. Yeah, right? I mean, You're the not PRs are important out. for sure, but you got to think most of, of the workouts, and I haven't done CrossFit for a very long time, so actually, since we moved out here, but most of the workouts are going to be somewhere between the 15 to 25 minute range, which is perfect for jujitsu, right? Yeah. Cause you're going hard. You're going super hard for a little bit, you know, eight, five to eight, 10 minutes. And then you take a break another five, eight, 10 minutes, then take a break another five, eight, 10 minutes. So it's, it's perfect for that type of conditioning. That's why I really like CrossFit, you know, as a combo of what, what you're doing here. But I, I don't, I don't think power lifting is, is the, is complimentary, but strength training, conditioning, cardio. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Copy. All right. Thomas Campbell. I just wanted to give you guys a shout out for using your platform to promote such influence and change among men in a world that needs men to stand up more uh, now than ever. Thank you guys. Oh, geez. Thanks. Thomas. Yeah. It's good to, it's good to hear that because I get stuff on social media all the time. That is the antithesis of what Thomas just said. <laughs> So I'm glad to hear there's a few of you who believe we're doing the right thing and doing good things. And you know what? Here's the deal. Even if you didn't think that, I don't care. I'm still doing it. So it doesn't matter yeah. to me. But I do appreciate the, the vote of confidence uh, and the complimentary words for sure. Copy. Matthew Barr, I recently moved to a new city and state for work and I'm now on my own. I'm not sure if what he means by on his own, maybe he's a younger guy. Uh, beyond finding a church and an apartment, what kinds of things would you recommend looking into to get situated? I, I tried to take a peek through these, uh, through these questions before we jumped on and I got distracted and I got busy with something else. So there's a podcast I did about a year and a half ago and I can't even remember, frankly, the title of it, but I think it's you know, something like building a tribe in a new environment or, or like something along yeah. those lines. Was it, it was about moving to Maine? Ago. Yeah. Yeah. So it was when we moved out that. here. So we moved out here in June or July of 2019. So like I said, about a year and a half ago or so go back and I wish I had the episode number. I don't, or the date, I don't have it, but go back June, July, August, somewhere in there of last year. And you're going to find an episode that I actually dive into this very question for 30 minutes, but what you're saying is so, so important. And I'm glad that you're aware of it because a lot of guys 
they just won't or they'll play passive. They'll wait for people to come to them or wait for things to happen. You know, but there are opportunities to embed yourself and entrench yourself in a new environment, but you have to be deliberate and intentional about it. You can't be passive about it because if you are, I think it will still happen. It will just take significantly longer to happen. So what I would suggest, you said church. I think that's a great resource because those people obviously have the same types of values that you do. And you're going to find people who are encouraged to be friendly and outgoing. So all of that plays in your favor. But I would also find some hobbies that you really enjoy. Again, we'll go back to jujitsu or training or hiking or photography or building a website or whatever, you know, whatever your thing is, then look for those individuals. You can tap into a community center that might have access to these types of things or tell you when these types of courses and programs uh, are becoming available. Uh, start a Facebook group. You know, if, if, if it were, and I didn't do this, but here's just one suggestion is start a Facebook group for people in your area that centers around a particular interest. Let's take hiking, for example. Just take initiative, just start it. And, and you are going to turn into one person and you two are going to turn into five and then 20 and then 50 and so on. But again, it's about you taking initiative to do it. So uh, another great resource is Rotary, uh, those types of, or any charitable organizations or clubs, Lions, Kiwanas, Rotary, uh, Business Network International, if you're revolved around business, Chamber of Commerce. These are all places that you can go where you're going to find other highly successful men who are motivated and ambitious and are actually trying to network with other people who are doing the same thing. So there's five or six resources. And you're, if you did that every week, you'd be off to the races. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. So I, I grabbed a couple, I did a quick search for tribe on the order man podcast. Oh, yeah. And did I think I, it? yeah, I think so. So you have one um, building a thriving, a thriving tribe is a Friday field note. Yeah, that might be it. Um, that was a, a Friday field note one zero four, at least on my phone. Oh yeah. It was a long time ago. So probably wasn't that one. Okay. There's another building a tribe and developing confidence and that's Friday field note one zero three. Maybe not. It's there. Just type in tribe. Yeah. Or Band yeah. of Brothers. Stephen Mansfield's got some good stuff on Band of Brothers. He's got a, a little book. It's a short, excuse me, a short little read called Building Your Band of Brothers. That's a powerful one. So there Yeah. Or just to listen to every episode and then you wouldn't have any questions. Everything right. would be addressed. I mean, that's that's the real <laughs> issue here is why don't you already know that we recorded this podcast a year and a half ago? That's the real issue that we need to address here. The totally. elephant in the room right here is you don't listen to every episode. Come on, man. Yeah. You got to listen to every episode before you ask a question on the AMA. And then what will happen is like, you'll ask and like, there's nothing. <laughs> all we do is reference old podcasts anymore. That's all we do. Yeah, it is funny because every once in a while, somebody will say, they'll email me or message me and say, Hey man, I, I just got turned on to your podcast for my brother or whatever. Uh, what episode should I start at? Like, where do you start? You st every, you start at zero zero one, man. That's where you start. I, did. I listen to every episode. <laughs> And, you know, in the Facebook group, sometimes guys will say, uh, w you know, what podcast recommendations or what? And I, and my standing advice is unless you, you've listened to every single order of man podcast episode, there is not another podcast you need to worry about at the moment. Yeah. So get caught up and then you can, you know, branch out from there, but we need to establish this foundation first priorities. Yeah. That's right. Well, and, and on a more serious note, like this podcast. Well, I was serious. Up, what do you mean on a more serious oh, note? Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> related to that. Uh, but this podcast serves as a great tool to know who to follow, right? And what books oh, to read. Sure. Like what books? literally, yes. like this, this podcast is like my, my, my reading list. You know, you have an interview. I'm like, that was profound. I want to hear more from that guy. I now buy that book, right? Yeah. So, of course. Yeah, a lot of good resources coming out of here. All right, Drew uh, Sayens. What does date night look like for the Mickler and the Sorensen households? Sitter, after kids go to bed, just had our second and the house workload is for sure getting in the way and what, what was free time when we only had one. So limited time, craziness, second kid in the household. Yeah, I mean, it's been, look, it's been a long time for us because 
since we moved out here trying to find sitters, we don't have family in the area. So that's been a little bit more challenging. Yeah. But over the past couple of months, we've got a neighbor, uh, a, a young a young lady. She's in a first year in college. She'll come over and she'll sit for us. And she's phenomenal. She's awesome. And, and so we, uh, we went down a couple of weeks ago to the coast and we tried to go uh, deep sea fishing. It didn't work out because of the weather. But she was at the house all day with the kids. And... It was awesome. You know, we, we explored the area. We were going to go, we went out on the water for a little bit, then kind of explored the area and we just spent all day there. So yeah, sitters, uh, w traditionally what we always like to do, we're a little further away. So it's harder now is we would typically just go get dinner and then we would go to Barnes and Noble <laughs> like that. That yeah. was mostly our date nights or occasionally yeah. we'd watch a movie, uh, you know, but sometimes look, don't overlook the power of just going for a walk. Yeah, you know, now our kids are pro I don't know how old Drew's kids are. He says he has another another one, so I'm assuming they're probably both pretty young. Yeah. But for me, you know, we've got uh, a 12-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 6-year-old and a 3-year-old. For us to go on a walk or go on a drive or run an errand, that's no problem at all. And so sometimes my wife and I will just say, "Hey, let's go for a walk at lunch." That's another thing we do at lunchtime is we sit down at the kitchen table uh, we have lunch. She makes dinner or lunch for me. I come down, I take a break from work and we typically watch clips from Tucker Carlson or something like that. And when the kids come in, we're like, Hey, nope, this is our time. Go do your thing. And we kick them out immediately when they come in at lunch, because that is our time. And the kids know it. So they've gotten better at it because we've established that routine and that habit. Uh, so don't overlook the small little moments and opportunities, but certainly, yeah, take advantage of the, the bigger opportunities where you have to plan and bring a sitter in. Even a staycation where, you know, maybe you have your folks come over or her folks come over and you get a hotel and you go to the neighboring town and you have dinner and movie and have a hotel room. Perfect. Even stuff like that is very, very powerful in, in, uh, when you don't have a whole lot of time or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, those are all the same things that we roughly do. I mean, right now it's like, uh, we're, I'm not sure if I mentioned to you. So we're, we're both taking EMT training, Asia and I. Oh, you did. Yeah. You mentioned that a couple of weeks ago or a month ago. Yeah. So, so that's been chaotic, right? So it's like four hours on Mondays and Wednesdays. And that's like, you know, our window of date night now is like, do you want to grab some Taco Bell on the way home? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, or, or we consider that tr or that class is our kind of our date night and we're talking and, you know, doing something unique together. So, yeah, man. um, yeah, I, you just kind of make it work, Drew. So, but um, anyhow, all right. Andrew Sheets, hey, Ryan and Kip, hope all is well. Just joined the Iron Council Sunday after absorbing your content for almost a year. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I'm currently listening, and I'm currently listening to Sovereignty. Looking forward to the call on Friday. Any advice for new members? What should I expect out of this group in a year? Lower your expectations first, first of all. Again, I, I don't I don't say that because I think we put together a crappy <laughs> product for you here. That sounded really bad. <laughs> I know. I'm just saying like First of all, don't think this is gonna help you at all. <laughs> no, I think what a lot of people get <laughs> they did come out wrong. I think what a lot of men get into is they think that just because they showed up or they paid a couple of bucks that there's some system that's going to solve all their problems and they're just waiting. I mean, even embedded in that question a bit is like, what are you going to do for me? Yeah. Which I get, and I'm not saying it's out of line. I'm, I'm certainly not saying that, but if you, if you, if you really think about that question, it's like, what are you going to give? Like, what can I expect because of what you've done in a year? The answer is what are you going to put in? I can't tell you because I've had guys that have come into the Iron Council and they've left in five days and they've requested a refund. And of course, we've honored that refund because I don't believe in jerking people around and they didn't get a thing of it. I've had other people who stuck around for years and years and didn't get a thing of it. I've had people that came in for, for two months and they're completely changed or they've been around for four years and it's completely changed their life and they'll never leave the Iron Council because of what it continues to offer for them and how it keeps them in line. So the real question is not what do you, what can you expect in a year? The real question is what are you going to do in the next year? Are you going to join a battle team? Are you going to do battle plans? Are you going to stay engaged in the topics? Are you going to try to become a team leader? 
Are you going to offer and encourage value? Are you going to participate in our foundry, which is where all the communication takes place? What is it that you're going to do? And then when I hear that, then I'll be able to tell you what, what will happen. Now, what potentially could happen in a year, if you do everything that we tell you to, you follow for now the start here program, you get yourself on a battle team, you get into an XO position, you could potentially become in a year easy, a new team leader with the growth that we're experiencing. You could drastically and, and just completely transform your life, your marriage, your relationship, your fitness, every facet of your life could radically and drastically be improved through the principles that we teach, but it's not up to me. I wish it was because then I would just wave my magic wand and say, be better, <laughs> but it's up to you. What are you going to put in? And then I'll tell you what you're going to get in return. I would like to add to the expectation thing. I don't think there's what's wrong with expectations sometimes is that you think your expectation is right. And when it doesn't happen, then you make it wrong. And so it's not that lower your expectations. It's don't have expectations. So then that way, when it doesn't show up, when, when the Iron Council doesn't show up the way you thought it would, you don't label it as wrong and, and, and dismiss it. That's the danger of expectation Iron Council. So you, you want to get the best of that uh, uh, Iron Council? Guess what? Life is going to show up in there. And you're going to see things where you go, oh, man, and you're going to be tempted to go, it shouldn't be this way. And the reality of it is, it should be that way because that's how life is. You're going to have to deal with certain things that you don't enjoy dealing with because that's how you grow. The Iron Council is not like this, this bubble for manhood that goes, here, let us help you become better without any challenges and difficult circumstances. No, it, it will show up. It will be difficult. You're going to have hardship and you're going to have to deal with it. And the more and that you have it, the better your experience will be. Exactly. The more that you place it on yourself. So here's what a lot of people will do. And, and I, let me talk about it from a couple of different perspectives. So a lot of people will, will pay, it's $67 a month, right? Which is not a lot. I, I realize it's relative. For some people, that's a lot. For some, it's, yeah. it's none. But it's not a lot when you think about the value that we add, Okay. And so they pay their $67 a month and they think that we owe them everything. And we don't. Now, that being said, we try to create, Kip, you and I and the rest of the team leadership, try to create an environment that will afford the men who join every opportunity possible. So I believe that we do have a responsibility to make it the best possible environment for men to thrive. I have that responsibility. But just because me and you and the rest of the team leadership have this responsibility does not mean that you don't have some responsibility in it. And, and I'm not saying, I think it was Andrew. I'm not suggesting that Andrew was saying this, but I do know a yeah. lot of men believe this, that they think, well, because, you know, it's my boss's job to ensure that I have a job. It's my wife's job to ensure that, that I'm fulfilled. It's, it's the economy or the president's job to ensure that uh, I have a, a job or health insurance or any number of things that so many people feel entitled to. And there might be an element of truth to that. If you're going to invest in the Iron Council, for example, then I believe that, yeah, I have a responsibility to offer a product that's going to serve you best. But you also have a responsibility to put the process into action. And if you're not willing to do that, if it's only one way, then nothing in your life will change. And by the way, guys, this isn't a message about the Iron Council. This is a message about life. If you show up to your job and you think that it's your employer's responsi sole responsibility to, to give you clients and to give you training and give you access to new information and new systems and the technology. If you think it, that's partially his responsibility, but if you think it's solely that individual responsibility, man, you're leaving so much on the table because what would happen if you came to your employer and said, Hey, here's the things that we have available and I'm maximizing my use and efficiency in these tools. I think there's one or two tools that we can use based on previous ex experience with my other employer. And I think if you invested in this, this, and this, that we could radically increase 
uh, profits in the fourth quarter. <laughs> like, could you imagine if you had a great employer, and I think most of them are, you had a good employer and, and you had an employee come to you and say that? I, I would, yeah. I would be ecstatic that I've got an individual who's bought into the program because most employees are like, well, what can you do for me? When's my paycheck? Oh no, I'm not putting any extra time in. I'm not coming in here. You're not paying. That's not my responsibility. And that all is, is wonderful because what it does is it presents an opportunity for you to take some level of responsibility and set yourself apart from the rest of the guys who are just showing up for that paycheck and love to punch out as early as possible on Friday afternoon and as late as possible on Monday morning. Yeah. So many opportunities if you're willing to take responsibility. Go ahead, Kev. Yeah. I was just going to say those guys that you, you know, the analogy that you use of those guys was like they're in it for themselves or whatever. A common thing that they believe is, well, I'll take on that responsibility, Ryan, when that's my title. Yes. When, when, when I received the title of leader or manager, then I'll do it. Or some of us at home might say, well, if my wife treated me like a patriarch, then I'd fulfill that responsibility. And here's the deal, guys, you're never going to get that title if you're not that way, right. period. You're right. never going to be the manager. You're not going to be a leader if you're not that genuinely on your own, regardless of the actual title. You don't need the title at all. You can actually have leadership qualities and be bought into the system and focus on what's best for the organization and your family without the title being given to you. Definitely. I remember years ago I was in, in retail. That's my background before the financial planning industry. And, and we were setting up a new store, a brand new store. So there was boxes and clothes and things just scattered everywhere. And we got the store I would say like 80 to 90% of where it needed to be with the fixtures and the clothes and got the boxes unpacked and everything else. And I remember vividly, I was talking with my store manager about something. I don't remember what we were talking about. And one of the team members came over and said, Hey, can I just interrupt you real quick? There's some clothes lying on the ground right there. And we just really need to get those clothes picked up and put away because they're going to get dirty and they're going to get folded. And I looked at this person like, like, why are you bothering? So I walked over there. I picked it up the, the pole and I set it on the rack and it took me what? 12 seconds. And then I walked back and got back into my conversation. Guys, the problems are there. Everybody sees them, right? You see them, other employees see them, your boss, everybody sees the problems. That's what we do as human beings. But I think it's infinitely more rare to find the individual who doesn't just yap about it or acknowledge there's a problem, but actually solves the problem. Yep. And in that case, it took me 12 seconds. What problems are you not solving? What problems does everybody else recognize? And nobody has, uh, nobody has addressed. They've acknowledged it, but they haven't addressed it yet. And can you set yourself apart, to your point, Kip, and, and, and become a leader, at least set yourself apart as qualified as a leader by solving the problem that everybody else has been yapping about for the last two years. That's how you step into leadership. Acknowledge, fix, acknowledge, fix. Don't just stop at the acknowledgement part. Yeah. And that's why I've always loved, you know, um, just to extend this to a broader conversation, you know, we, and we, I'm sure we've talked about this in the past is be, do have, right. You, you be that individual. It's how you are being, and then you take action and then you get the title. You get the recognition. It doesn't go any other way. It's true. I, you know, I, I'll give another example and, and I want to, I'm actually really hesitant to bring this example up, but I want to, I want to, because I'm not trying to toot my own horn here at all when I say this, but I want to bring this up because I want people to understand how easy this is. It's super easy. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, you're at my place, right? And you came and you checked out the studio and you, you were excited about it. And you took notes on the microphone. Like I saw yeah. you, you had your, either you had your phone out yeah, or a notepad I, and you were I'm writing it pictures. down. <laughs> pictures. Okay. So yeah. you were like, all right, let me see what this is. Let me see what model it is. What, okay. What boom might, okay. All of that stuff, right? Guys, this is how easy it is. So whatever it was last week, I jumped on Amazon and I bought it and just had it sent to you. Like, <laughs> Like, that's how easy it is, guys. I'm telling you, it's so easy. And, and, and 
Kip, you feel good about that. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I acknowledge you. I gave you a gift that was valuable for you. It was sure to help the podcast, but it'll help you individually as well. You feel important and you are, you should feel that way. You feel like you're worth investing in that. I believe that. And I certainly believe that's the case. Yeah. It's so easy guys. Like, it's just there, but how many people would have seen you take pictures and said, oh yeah, he really wants that microphone. And then like gone off to do whatever else they get distracted with. It is so easy. You know, your wife talks about something that she's interested in, whether it's beekeeping or, you know, the class that she was interested in. And you're like, oh yeah, that sounds really cool. And then you just blow it off and you never think about it again. It's like, buy her a book, man. Like, let her know that you care about her or your boss is dealing with a problem at work. And he's like, yeah, we just, uh, the technology's lagging or it's behind. What would keep you from in the evening one night this week is just doing a little research and coming back to your boss and saying, Hey, you know, uh, boss, you were telling me about these three problems. And I jumped online. I did a little research and I found these three solutions and solution a you know, it's a little bit expensive, but it seems like it's got everything we need. Solution B is less expensive, but it's not as robust. And solution C is pretty efficient, pretty cost effective. And like, if you're interested, I would probably recommend C for these reasons. It's yeah. so easy. Yeah. Like it's you all know, right there in front of you. Yeah. If an employee did that, you'd be like, I love that guy. <laughs> of course you <laughs> would. Be like, awesome. Of course you would. And yet totally. we just won't take initiative because it required what what did it require me to buy a microphone for you it required you know 20 minutes to get to get it it required uh, some capital investment and it required a text to say hey can i get your address yeah guys like we're missing so many opportunities that are just right there and nobody else is doing it, which is awesome because if you do it, then you're going to set yourself apart. You're just a rock star instantly. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're amazing. Yeah. So anyways, I, I hope that didn't come across as like tooting my, horn, my own horn or to diminish, Kip, the gift that I did want to give to you. Oh, I no. didn't want to do that. No, no, but I wanted no, no. to explain like a very simple thing that would actually, if you just did that every day, your life would be completely different in a matter of what, 30 yeah. days? Totally. Immediately, well, overnight? And it's not just like, oh, that, that employee's awesome, but they're going to want you around. <laughs> when you're well, that way, people are like, too. I want to be around that guy, right? Like he's addressing things. He's on top of things. He's thinking about things. Like you're just a valuable person to be around when you do right. those things. Yeah. And think about your confidence. That's one of the things that guys deal with a lot is like, how do I build and develop my confidence? There's, there's like a dozen mm -hmm. ideas, Kip, you and I just gave them. I mean, imagine wanting to be wanted. Like everywhere you go, you're like, yeah, I want to be around Ryan. I want to be around Kip. Uh, I want Kip to be on this, heading up this task or this project. And I want Ryan at this event. And like, and so you're getting invites. What's that going to do to your confidence level? Totally. Of course, you're going to walk, like Jordan says, you're going to, Jordan Peterson says, you're going to walk a little higher chest out, shoulders back, looking people in the eye. And then that level of confidence is going to breed more action, which will breed more confidence. And it's just this big cyclical process that's going to help you really become something more than you are today. And it's so easy. It's all right there in front of you. Yeah. And we've already said it, but I think the guys don't do that because they want to be granted permission to do so, or they think, well, I need to be in that role or that title, or I need someone to believe in me first. Yeah. W wouldn't you agree? Yeah. But, but the other side, yes, I would agree with that, but we do have to also throw the disclaimer out there that, and, and I shouldn't have to say it, but yeah, there are some boundaries that you can't cross. Right. So, <laughs> you know, if you're at your yeah. work, I probably wouldn't just invest in a multi thousand dollar platform on my own, hoping that my boss would, wouldn't, would agree with me or, yeah. or even worse, or just invest for him because I have access to the company credit card or something. <laughs> so yes, yeah. there are boundaries that you need to be aware of. And th those are hard boundaries, but there's a lot of wiggle room between where you are and that boundary. And that's where you should operate.
Yeah. And in the example that you gave with the guy that came to his boss with the three options, that's perfect. He didn't make any decision on behalf of the boss. He did his research, collected the necessary data so he could prevent, present possible solutions. Perfect. Right. And the, going beyond perfect. that would be, I, I actually purchased this and I implemented You're like, oh shit, you know, that's another right. problem. Yeah. Or, or what, what you also could run into is okay, so let's say you're my employer, Kip, and I come to you with these three options and you're like, oh man, thank you. This is really valuable. And then I follow up with you in a week. Hey, did you ever decide? I think that's appropriate. Did you ever decide if you wanted to do anything? And you're like, ah, yeah, no, no. And then I follow up in two days and then five days and then 10 days. All right, stop. Yeah. You got to do the work and then let the chips fall where they may. Don't be a brown noser. Don't overdo it. Don't be needy. Push an agenda. Yes, yeah. don't do that. Just present the options and have faith that your boss is going to make a choice in his and the employee's best interest. Now, if he, can, if he perpetually makes horrible decisions, then maybe think about different employment. But just be careful of, of what, how this could be perceived. That's another thing you need to be aware of. Totally, totally. And I think when we, when we are genuine in our efforts – usually that kind of works itself out, right? Like in that example, my follow-up with you after like a week would be, is there any additional research that you would need me to make or that you think would be valuable to help you make that decision? That's still a genuine wanting to do what's best for the company, not, hey, did you implement one of my ideas yet? You know, it's like, okay, that's, yeah. there's, there's different objectives happening in those two different examples. So and I'm try to be genuine said- with it. Yeah. Well, you said genuine at first. I'm like, okay, well, let's define that. What, what do you mean by yeah. genuine? Because genuine could mean I'm doing what's in my best interest. Like that's actually genuine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you did clarify also, you said genuinely in the best interest of the organization. You said that, right? Yeah. And sometimes your best interest and the organization's best interest are aligned and sometimes they're not. So I, I, you did make the distinction, yeah. but immediately when you said genuine, I'm like, hold on, what... We Let's all have that. Genuine, what do you mean yeah. by that? Right? Because <laughs> yeah. I genuinely want to get out ahead of everybody. <laughs> so Fair. that's genuine too, right? So yeah. Yeah. Copy. All right. Let's all drive right. on. Brett- we, we're so <laughs> far off the answer to, to his question. What was it about dating? <laughs> no, it was, what was it? About? Advice it was about for new Council. members. Yeah. Yeah. It was about the Iron Council. <laughs> about dating. All right. Brett Hobman. Hey fellas, I believe in setting your mindset for the first day, uh, Setting your mindset for the day first thing in the morning. I'm looking at creating my own affirmations to add to my morning routine. I've heard Kip mention his perform, uh, he, he performs affirmations as part of his morning routine. So this question is directly more at him. What are your affirmations? Do you create your own? And if so, how did you create them? Well, here, I'll lead, I'll lead off with that. Yeah, go ahead, lead off. I don't have affirmations. <laughs> Go ahead. Your your point. Next question. Your, your turn. You're here. an idiot. Why would you? No, do no, no. That? I just don't. Oh, I just my affirmation just is just kick ass. Like well, you got always, work to do. That you got work to cool. do. Uh, when you said kick ass, reminds you of uh, Johnny and Cobra Kai. Just be I, badass. I, I watched <laughs> 20 minutes of the first episode last night. I've never seen any other episodes. And. You not like it? I enjoyed it? it. No, no, I enjoyed it. Okay. I only watched 20 minutes because my family came home from a quick, you know, from a, a two or three day vacation and they came home and so I turned it off. But okay. yeah, I mean, it was good. It was good. Yeah, keep, keep watching. They're super funny. Okay. So affirmations. I'm not, I don't have mine. Uh, it's long enough that I have to read it. But uh, in the Iron Council and in the Battle Ready program, which you guys, guys that aren't part of the Iron Council, you can learn more by going to orderofman.com slash battle ready. And within Ryan's book, Sovereignty, one of the key things around our battle plans is creating a vision. And and that is impactful all in itself. Now, where this relates to an affirmation, it it is my summary or short version of that vision. So this is me or how I connect back to my vision on a regular basis. So then that way, when I start my day, I'm reminded, what is my purpose? What is my vision? What am I working towards? And how am I going to show up in that day? Um, and I, like I said, I don't have my affirmation to share it. And, and sometimes there's some drawbacks to even, maybe even possibly sharing it because this should be very unique to each of us, right? Your affirmation should 
to should drive you. And so my affirmation moves, touches, and inspires me. I kind of get the goosebumps a little bit. I'm like, mm, hell yeah, I, I want to kick ass. Like that's kind of like the feeling I have after I read my affirmation. And then right after I read it, I know you're not asking for this specifically, Brett, but I think it's valuable is right after I read it, I look at my calendar and I go, oh, okay, I got a meeting at 930. How am I going to show up in that meeting based upon that vision? Mm. Okay, how am I going to, and it sounds silly, but it's so powerful. How am I going to show up when I walk on the mats at noon? All right, when I come home from picking up the girls from gymnastics and I walk in the house at seven, how am I going to show up? How am I going to communicate with my wife? How do I interact with my son? And, and when I start looking at my day and I, and I relate it to what I said in my affirmation, that changes how I show up. And, and that is how I implement in my life. And that's why it's so critical. But it, it, the only the coaching I would have to be is it should be very unique to you and it should move and inspire you. And it should be in conjunction or related to your vision. It sounds like uh, you're very thoughtful with that process of how am I going to show up? How is this going to impact the people around me? And I can really appreciate that. There's one thing I was thinking of as you said that, and with this question in general, is sometimes when I think of the term affirmations, I think about this one or handful of phrases that you say repeatedly over and over again. Mm, like, and you are lovely. People like you. Yes. <laughs> and so I see. we have this phrase, Kip, in, 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 our, in our church, which is to avoid uh, vain repetition, right? Yep. Avoid vain repetition. And I think that you could fall into that trap with having a preset affirmations. You are special people like you, you're strong, you're this, you're that. And at some point, maybe because you tell yourself so often and quite frankly, our actions don't always match our words that we create this battle in our minds about whether or not we actually are special or we are strong or we are capable. And so for me, it's not lying to myself and it's avoiding the vain repetition of just saying something for the sake of saying it, yeah. but instead, and you, and you hit on this actually, because you said it has to be, I, I don't know the exact verbiage you used, but meaningful and inspiring and emotional, something along those lines. Right. Yeah. And so at some point when you say something over and over again, it loses its effectiveness because it's not, a, it's not congruent with who you are and how you're showing up. So I don't, I don't like that type of affirmation. Like you're a hard worker. You are special. You are needed. I don't like that Yeah. because it doesn't, well, for me, it's not motivating. It's like, okay, well, if I'm those things, then why try any harder? <laughs> like I'm already reached it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. For me, I'm like, you could be awesome today. Like you could potentially today have the best ask me anything podcast that you've ever done. You could be as effective today than you've ever been. You could actually do all of those tasks on your list. You could do all of this. Like imagine what that would look like. To me, those aspirational and hopeful, I don't even think they're affirmations. I think it's just thoughts. Like yeah. what, what's it going to be like when I get this all done or when I have this certain interview? I mean, how many people are going to be reached and impacted positively by that conversation I'm going to have? These are the thoughts that bounce around in my brain and they're aspirational as opposed to I've already achieved them because if I've achieved them, there's no reason for me to continue to drive on. And I just don't want to get into the vain repetition. People do this with prayer. People do this with scripture study. It's like they say the same thing over and over again, so much so that it's just lost all of its power and all of its ability to change you because it's like just sounds that your vocal cords are making at this point. It has no meaning or significance behind it. Totally. And I think that's where Brett and other guys, if, if this is something that you want to tackle, um, it's, it's how you write it. Like for instance, it, a phrase that I have in the affirmation, I'm going to slaughter it, but you guys don't know that. Um, a well, phrase they do I have now because you just said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if today, if I am confronted with difficult situations, I will not shrink out of hopeless, hopelessness of fear and if necessary, we'll go to, to, to like, go to my Lord in prayer for guidance and direction. Like it, it's not a Kip, you'll be okay. And you're going to be amazing. It's like, no, 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 this is what, this is how I'm going mm. to address this. 
Like it's, it's more like action driven affirmation, I guess. And maybe I've yeah, destroyed like affirmations, but that's what, that's what helps that's what me show up differently. Yeah. Do you think that you even need to tell yourself that anymore? Is there value in that? Or do you feel like when you're confronted with those situations, you will default into that at this point? No, I purposely, things I put in my affirmations are areas in which I need guidance and direction on. I have a mm. tendency to go, oh, this is frustrating. Like, especially if it's like an argument with my wife, my default behavior is not to be aggressive. It is to like, oh, I don't want to deal with it. You know what I mean? And like procrastinate and push it off. So why is that in my affirmation? Because I'm not going to shrink, right? I'm going to deal with it immediately. I am going to show up this way, right? So I, I intentionally yeah. have things in there that where I'm kind of not ideal and, and it's kind of like a, I don't know, a checklist of how, how I should show up in the event that certain things arise. That makes sense. I know for me, <clears throat> when I react as opposed to respond to things, and I, and I think there is a distinct difference between the two. I like Reaction to me actually. is more emotional. Respond is more logical. Yeah. I'm a reactionary person. I know that about myself. And I think it's important to understand these things about who you are and how you would typically show up. So, because I want to get shit done. And so when something or somebody is in my way, I like, get the hell out of my way. I we're going like fix this. We got to go. Yeah. And I know that reactionary response is actually counterintuitive. Most of the time is counterintuitive or counterproductive. I should say it actually, creates the exact opposite. It bogs down the system. It upsets people. Uh, they work, they don't work quite as hard because they feel like they're being picked on. I know that about myself. So for me, I've had to be very deliberate about not being reactionary and instead notice like when my blood pressure rises, stop, breathe, disengage, think, then re-engage because <laughs> that is yeah. not my natural tendency. And, and so that isn't an, an affirmation so much so as it is just confirming what you just said about the things that you know you need to work on. And that is an area I know I need to work on because I feel like if I'm on a mission, either lead me, you can follow me or just get the hell out of the way because I'm going and I am not stopping for anything. And that creates some collateral damage at times. Yeah. yeah. I like that. All right. Jarrett store, a uh, storal. Sorry, Jarrett, Garrett, Jarrett. What is the best place <laughs> to, to start? I thought you got the last name them. wrong, but, uh, I know you got the entire thing no, wrong. It's, it's, it's Jarrett. I don't know why Jarrett. I threw in okay. Garrett. All right. So Jarrett, <laughs> what is the best place to start to get out of the, uh, get out of the Mr. Nice guy rut? I've been in it my entire life books uh, to read places to start. No books. I mean, okay, there's one book. No more Mr. Nice Guy. All right. <laughs> I'm assuming that you've already read it because you know this about yourself. No yeah. more books. No more books. Stop. You, you have everything you need. Yeah. You have everything you need. You don't even need a book. All you need to do is start saying no to more people. That's it. And don't, I'm not would you add, don't excuse it? No, don't, don't tell them why. Like yeah. when your buddy calls you up this weekend and says, Hey, I'm moving. And, uh, you know, can I borrow your truck? Oh no, no, not this weekend. <laughs> Good luck. That is hard, man. That is soup. But that's the point. That's the point. And I'm not saying be a dick because a lot, what a lot of guys will do recovering nice guys is what a lot of them will do is they'll go overboard and they'll turn into the a-hole. That's not yeah. what I'm saying to do. But I think you do need to tiptoe that line a little bit. And I think you do need to experiment with being an a-hole. Not perpetually, not forever, but I think some experience in being kind of an asshole is maybe a healthy thing for somebody who's never been an asshole before. Is, does that make sense? I, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Because it is, it's a dichotomy, right? It's a balancing act between two extremes. Nice guy, not to be confused with being kind, there's a distinction. I've talked about yeah. that, but nice guy and asshole. And we're all both at different times in life. And I think that's important because then you find where it's best to walk the line and you find out 
where it's important to actually, there are times where you should be an asshole, by the way, guys. Yeah. Like being able to defend yourself, stick up for yourself or other people is actually okay. Nice guys don't understand that. Guys who are perpetually on the other side, the a-hole type guy, there are times where maybe a little kindness would go a very long way and maybe you could be a little bit more empathetic. That's something I need to focus on is be more understanding, be more tolerant, be more empathetic because I tend to go the other way. Yeah. So what you need to do, Jarrett, is you need to practice, it sounds funny, but just like dancing with the devil a little bit. <laughs> you need to practice that. You need to practice telling people, no, no, I won't do that. Or if somebody's doing something you don't like, you need to practice saying, you know what, Kip? I don't appreciate that. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate our friendship, but I don't appreciate you uh, not showing up on time when you make a commitment to me. You need to be able to say that. Totally. And any friend that you actually want in your life would have the testicular fortitude to be able to accept that and say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, he's right. I, I was kind of a dick because I didn't show up and I told him I would. And if you totally. can't handle that, I don't want that kind of friend in my life. Well, one of the root issues with a no more Mr. Nice Guy, or a nice guy, I should say, is you're trying to control other people's emotion and second guess it and go over the top to make sure that you don't offend someone. Like, no, so let me make this distinction, Kip, real yeah. quick. Because I, I want to make, I, I do need to interject here. Okay. Because you're not trying to control other people. You're not trying to do it for other people. That's, That's what true. nice guys will say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I just I don't, I don't want anybody to feel bad. Notice what you said there. I don't want anybody to feel bad. It isn't about the other person. It's about you. You can't about handle you. somebody else yeah. feeling bad. Yeah. So let me, let me try to reword it because I, I think the point I was trying to make is, is still valid is – Things that you might assume as rude is not rude. You're just so paranoid about the person interpreting, like for instance, the example of, hey, Kip, I don't appreciate you being late. How is that rude? Right. How is it's that be you being a jerk? It's not. But, but you're so paranoid about being liked by me that you, you will kowtow and adjust and everything just to make sure that Kip doesn't interpret that as being overly aggressive or rude. Right, we call so that you're baggage. Not really being, yeah, you're really not being rude. Like, you're just so paranoid about being accepted that, like, you're just trying to walk on eggshells on everything you do when reality is just clear communication and, and precise communication is not rude. Like, if literally, if you said that to me, hey, Kip, hey, AMAs, we usually start five minutes late. I kind of don't appreciate it. If you could make sure that we start on time, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't go, dick. What a, what a jerk. I would go, actually, he's right. Like spot on. Got it. You know, but that's, you know, we know. bring our own baggage to the equation and then we dump it on other people. So the baggage that you have that a nice guy has is that at some point he interpreted a, an assertive message as something negative, right? So he interpreted the message of you saying, Hey, be on time as you're a horrible person or something. I'm not right? good enough. Yeah. Right. Yep. So he interpreted it incorrectly and because he interpreted it incorrectly, then what, so he accepted the baggage. He took it. That's the baggage. And then what he did is he said, here's my baggage and it must be true. It's gotta be true. Cause this is the lens in which I view my life. And so I'm going to give this baggage to everybody else that I meet. I used to actually do the same thing in my financial planning practice when I started because I was in a very rough spot financially, which I realized is ironic at the time, teaching other people how to handle their money, but not being able to handle my own money. I see the irony in that. So I would go into appointments and I would have people telling me, oh, have them invest this much and here's what they should do and here's how they should invest it. And I would go into my appointments very timidly and I would say, I, you know, I know this is a big investment. I know that this is, I'm asking you to make a big commitment. And I had a trainer one time say, why do you keep saying that? Yeah. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he says, you keep saying like, I know it's a big commitment. I know it's, a, I'm asking a lot. I know it's a big investment. Why do you keep saying that? I'm like, cause it is. He's like, no, it isn't. 
It is to you, but you're projecting that onto other people and then they're interpreting it as this is a big commitment. And so that's why you're not closing any deals because <laughs> you're saying that they shouldn't do it through your language because you wouldn't do it. Yeah. This is classic projection. I'm going to take the baggage, the interpretation of the stories I've held, and I'm going to project them onto you, whether or not you believe that or have that same view as I do. And it's a very slippery slope when you do that, because you're going to close yourself off to a whole lot of opportunities that would have otherwise presented themselves. Same thing with the podcast. When I reach out to podcast guests, I don't say, oh, well, you know, like, uh, it's a kind of a smaller podcast than you're used to. And, you know, like maybe, uh, Maybe it's not what you normally would do. No. This is a podcast. You should be on this one. Because we're going to help you get in front of these people. And you've got a message to share. And it's valuable. And what we do is valuable. And we should connect. And I get significantly more response, positive response that way than saying, well, you look, can you do me a favor? Maybe kind of help me? No. I'm helping you. You're helping me. This is reciprocal. And I realize the value that I have. And nice guys just don't. They don't. Because, again... They've adopted baggage that isn't, it isn't true with a capital T. It's their perception of it. Yeah. And would you, would you, and I think we've already covered it kind of, but would you call this out specifically that, that, that nice, no more, what do we call these guys? <laughs> nice guys. Nice, nice guys. Yeah. Nice guys. Do they, there's, there's also a lack of communication happening where they're not, openly communicating frustrations and whatever. I mean, is that, it's somewhat of a given because yeah, I you think should so. be clear in your communication, but a lot of those guys are kind of holding back a lot of stuff and they're never communicating. And then they're lashing out in other ways as well. Yeah. They lit, they lash out, they become vindictive. I had somebody in my financial yeah. planning practice contracts that would yep. try to, that actually begun to try to sabotage me because he was a nice guy and he wouldn't communicate with me. And so he tried to undermine and sabotage my client relationships because he, he felt like he was getting taken advantage of. And I didn't know that because I never was, that was never communicated to me. Never had any of these types of conversations. There's some level of responsibility on my part, sure. Yeah. But I never had these conversations. And so that come to find out, he's trying to sabotage me. I'm like, what in the world's going on? Hmm. Well, he was a nice guy. He was afraid of confrontation. He didn't want people to think he was a bad guy or he didn't want to me to feel bad or whatever. And so he still ended up acting out his, his thoughts. He just did them in clever and sneaky and despicable Cold ways. ways. Yeah. Yes. So it still comes out. It's still there, but yeah. it's better to have, and we've talked about the valve on the pressure cooker, right? You've got to have the valve on the pressure cooker. That doesn't mean you just spill your guts. Cause if you do that, then you lose your effectiveness. Same thing with the pressure cooker. If you pull that valve, all the pressure is released and then it doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing. It's just enough, just a little bit of pressure, just a little bit. So it doesn't turn into a bomb. Not all of it, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Uh, how are we doing on time? Let's just take one more and then I got to wrap things up on my end. Okay. Uh, I wanted to grab a name that I knew I was going to slaughter before we wrap up. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Rachenbach. Rachenbach. Yeah. Ryan Send me B. a message on Foundry and just be me. Ryan B. Ryan B. All it right. does start How with just, a B though, do, right, Kip? Like we it does start with a B at least. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know that letter. <laughs> Public school isn't all that bad. <laughs> all right. How to start a business without money. Would you take on the risk of a small business loan to live on, including health insurance and other family costs while building a business? I mean, it I really depends on the answer. business. Yeah, it really depends on the business. I, like my knee jerk reaction is no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Unless, unless you're starting like a, a manufacturing plant or, or, or maybe some sort of technology or app or something where you feel like there'll be a big payout and, and you need the funds to build it or, or to build the production or to buy the supplies. But if you're talking about a digital product, uh, something that is, you know, not really all that threatening, I would say, no, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I would, this is count, counter 
to what a lot of the like the internet guru go all in burn the boats it's like well also yeah. feed your kids and put a roof over their head <laughs> and don't so, risk their livelihood yeah <laughs> right uh so i would lean more towards hustle your ass off for two years and then you can start migrating towards making this a full-time venture but again it really depends on the business but i think for the overwhelming majority of us I mean, the barrier to entry for business, whatever it is, if it's coaching, Most if it's it consulting, if alone. it's photography, yeah. if it's, it's, you're not, yeah, I, I just don't see a whole lot of businesses where you're going to start. The exception of that is, you know, you look at somebody like Pete Roberts with Origin. You know, I, I know, I, I know personally, because we've had these conversations that he struggled, man, for a lot of years because he had to buy equipment and he had to figure out how to make the equipment run. And he had yeah. a couple of employees that he had to pay. And so... I know it was really hard for him, but that was the business that he was creating. Then you take his business partner, Jocko Willink. No, nah, he just started a podcast. You know, and granted now he's investing and in, because he's in the position to do that, but he's investing in, in venues and products and technology because he's at that point. It's just the business that you're trying to start. And I yeah. just don't think a lot of businesses require that much capital like maybe they used to yeah and i think in the early stages it's it's, it's all about confirming the the market and if there's a need and and that comes down to your minimal viable product and and i don't know enough about pete's uh story of origin well enough like the early days but i would probably suggest if i understand correctly that before pete bought a loom and made investments he made he had Gies designed and confirmed that there's a market for him first. Yeah, he was so they were right? actually they had a plant uh, a manufacturer overseas that were doing their geese. Overseas, yeah. That's yeah. his MVP, right? right? So he confirmed like is there a market for our designs? And once he confirmed like oh there is. Okay. Now it makes sense for me to maybe get a business loan and invest in this idea. So way too many guys that I know think like, okay, step one, go to bank, get loans. Like, no, 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 no. Step right. one is confirm that you even have something that's valuable to sell. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, and, and there's ways at, for us to test that first before getting a huge loan. For sure. I, you even look at a, a huge organization like Under Armour. You know, I, I know one of the co-founders has been on the podcast, Kip Folks, who's a good friend of mine. And they started making stuff for themselves because they needed something that was breathing a little better than a t-shirt. So they made it for their team, their, their uh, lacrosse team. And then they started selling it to, I, I think if I remember correctly, other high schools in the area. And then a couple of yeah. colleges are like, Oh, what are you using? And they started doing it with colleges and then different universities. And then it just kind of expanded and expanded and expanded. So uh, granted at times, yes, they, they probably took out some loans. They probably brought bought investors because they wanted to scale it, but that wasn't day one. That was day yeah. 1,000, right? Yeah. Before they totally. started doing stuff. Totally, totally. Yeah. I love that story. I love stories like that. Because it's possible, man. It's, it's so possible, possible and they're, they're common and it's easier than it's ever been. I mean, who would have thought that five years down the road, you know, we'd be talking about what we're talking about. We'd be having events and products and podcasts and who would have ever thought? You would, yeah. nobody would ever thought yeah. that's because nobody and, ever did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's, and it required what, uh, was your level of intelligence is insanely higher and better than most people. Well, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's cause you're willing On to the take contrary. action. Exactly. Yeah. You're willing to take action. I bought a $70 microphone and I said, I hit record on my computer and I hit publish and we're off to the races. Yeah. And Pete, Probably bought Photoshop, liked some designs. Come no, up with some let me cool tell you, geese, right? Let me tell you, this is important actually to the story of, of origin. Pete's previous company was a marketing agency. So people say, oh, I love origins marketing. They're so good at it. Yeah, because that's what he was doing before origin. So okay. people say, oh, I wasted all that's that time. That's a skill. That's his skill set. It better be good. That's what he was doing for himself and other people. People would pay him to do that. He better be good at it. Yeah. So same thing with his podcast. Oh, Ryan, you're good at podcasting. Yes. 
because I actually had a podcast prior to this one. It wasn't what I wanted to talk about, but I cut my teeth doing that. So none of what you're going through is wasted. It's just pieces to the puzzle. You can't see the entire puzzle yet. It's just, oh, there's another little piece that I get to put into the puzzle as I'm on my journey to become who it is I'm, I'm wanting to become. Yeah, totally. It's crazy. I have All one right, of those re- like old school origin geese. Do you really? Yeah. The, I think it was like the comp, was it the comp 420 or something or 412? I don't know. Like uh, no they idea. were, I remember I got on the origin early mostly because of just the marketing. Like I loved how, the geese were designed. I love yeah, the man. flyers. I love the website. Like I was just like, Oh man, these guys are prestige. Like, it, yes. it, you know, really good looking products. It's funny. That's a skill set that he developed yeah. and he's honed it. Sure. But developed yeah. long before origin ever was, was born. Yeah, totally. Love it, man. All yeah, right. Brother. Let's wrap up. Yeah. So we mentioned a couple things on the call. So let's just do a quick summary. So, um, iron council exclusive brotherhood of the order of man, movement. Learn more, go to orderofman.com slash iron council to join us on Facebook and to submit questions for future AMAs. You can go to facebook.com slash group slash order of man. And then we also talked about the battle battle ready program, which is a free program, which you can sign up for. Uh, the definition I'd like to use is, is guidance and direction about getting on the court in life and, and building out your battle plan and uh, making the necessary adjustments goals and objectives to cause change in your life to learn more to go to orderman.com slash battle ready. And of course to support the podcast, subscribe, share the message, subscribe to YouTube, uh, follow Mr. Mickler on Instagram at Twitter and Twitter at Ryan Mickler. And of course is new swag in the store. Is this official? Yeah, man, we got, we got our windbreakers. Yeah. We got shirts, we got hoodies, we've got hats, we've got wallets, we've got flags, we've got, battle planners we've got beanies coming soon some there, slick guys. product some yeah, slick man. product store.orderman.com to uh, find that that's right all right kip i appreciate you man guys i appreciate you great questions today we'll keep the questions rolling and hopefully we can give you some answers that give you some some new perspective i know we don't always get it right but or even answer your question <laughs> but it's certainly uh, not your names <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But hopefully we give you something else to chew on. That's, that's the whole goal, and that's why we do what we do. So, guys, we'll be back on Friday. Until then, go out there, take action, and become the man you are meant to be.